Welcome back. Where were we? Towns and villages on apps. Now, towns and villages. To be fair, the other app did a very similar thing in probably more sharp detail. Um, either one does it really, really well. My choice would be the DM screen though for making up the towns and villages but the RPG generator by David Eastwick is a fantastic tool with combined with the DM screen app makes life really 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 simple can't really express enough how these apps can take an awful lot of work out of your hands and just make it seamless and there's a lot of work to do you've got non-playing characters to create you've got the magical items you've got motivations you've got just about everything you could possibly imagine that you have to do and so make your life as simple as possible really don't don't struggle these things are here to help now when I first started playing well to be fair the internet didn't even exist in fact laptops weren't really around either so I didn't have any of this when I started out everything had to come straight from yourself and the original D&D books well they had about 25 pages in and that included the Dungeon Master's books as well they, they were paperbacks and they were thin now you have an ocean I mean majority of my gaming was on 3.5 of which, to be fair, I have a an ocean now. To be fair, my books have all been pulled out at the moment. And they're not looking their best. And I will apologise for that. But, the books are vast. And I carry probably in the region on this laptop that I'm working from now. Probably in the region of maybe 2,000 books. Maybe 1,800 that I work from as well. Granted they are 3.5 but that doesn't stop you from stealing the hell out of them and adding it to 5th edition. Once again to give yourself ideas, concepts, stuff that other players won't know because some of the books I do have and hopefully when you start downloading things and looking for things you'll find equally just like I have an ocean of ideas out there. Now, other useful apps. It's a fun app. Um, you, you can kind of use it. It's the it's an insult app. The actual app itself, it's called the Fantasy Insult Generator. To be fair, it's it's a fun app. I mean, I don't generally, to be fair, remember to use it too often. But give an example. Bombastic Bombardment, you, click, uh, you tap it and you get a goblin-eared clapper-clawed tool. Or you can call the player a rough-hue rough full-born runt, a deafening cankerous buffoon, an ugly deafening malt worm. Or you have fighting words like a hedge-born chump, a grubby pumpkin. A fly bitten grungun, a blighted lipstickle, a goblin butlicker, petty jabs, novice, meathead, kobold hugger, baggage, worm. It kind of carries on and on and on. For the most part, <clears throat> it's never too difficult insulting playing characters. But if you really do need something really special, and if you can do it without noticing while you tap alongside your app, you can generally come up with some very good things. But if you're going to do it, and it's in the moment, you have to kind of be slightly in advance. Or you can do, I suppose, paper, and you can write down a whole list of words and keep it in front of your Dungeons & Dragons screen, and just literally read off the names while insulting your players. I'm sure for a lot of DMs, myself included, I'd rather enjoy that. What else do we have? 
Well, we've got an initiative tracker, which is a purple background with a black dice with purple numbers with the word IT on it. I'll see if I can show you without it being... Let's have a look. Where is it? Um, it is there. It's nice and it's simple. And if you don't want to have the players rolling initiative, that's fine. It Basically, you put the playing characters' names in. You put in their initiative. You put your creatures in in advance. And you just press the button and it tells you who goes first, which player goes first. It's all randomised, the creatures are randomised, and it's a good system. But you need to do it for each encounter, in as much as, although the player's names remain the same all the time, every time you put in a new creature with a different initiative, you will have to change it. It is only that reason that I don't use it as much as I could use it because you have a lot of encounters potentially and although you can load them you can um, I suppose I just never got round to it then in mean, half the time you can put in a lot of work and as we all know players bypass an encounter or three or four encounters and it just sits there and the time that you could have done it you could have done other things you can just get the players to roll their own initiative but if you really do want to go down the road of who goes first without the players having to worry about rolling that dice, well then it's a good system. It's a good, uh, it's a good app. What else do I have here? You've got high fantasy soundboard which does sound effects. It's a fun app. Um, some of it's okay. Uh, you've got combat, creatures, environment, loop, magic, modern, music, playable races, uh, sci-fi. Uh, we'll give an example. You have, for instance, let's do it, a laughing female. You have evil laughter. <laughs> and it pretty much goes on and on and on like that. You have uh, a female scream. Part two. <laughs> then you can go down to things like environment. The environment's actually not too bad. You've got things like um, a creaking door. You have a horse that's scared. Church bell. And so on and so forth. So if you have time to press these buttons and find them and they're not hard to find you can add a little bit more atmosphere to your game you've got things like coffin lids sliding across and stuff like that you've also got creatures although to be fair the majority of them all sound the same but some of them are better than others you have for instance dogs barking A dog snarling. Although I must admit that sounds more like snoring. You also have a dog pack. And it kind of goes on so on and so forth. Some of them are better than others. Some of them are just awful. But there's a few in there that can, that can be okay. Right, what other ones have we got on the hit list? One which I would say is almost a must. Uh, it makes life really easy. It's a water elemental image and it's called simply... Let's have a look. Uh, okay, we'll try that one again. 
this. Uh, that one. Cool companions. When you click on, it effectively gives you anything a druid's going to need for wild shaping. And from a DM's point of view, it gives you all the animals, elementals, axe beak, badger, boar, crab. The list goes on. They do update it fairly regularly. It gives you their attributes, their actions, their special abilities. It's pretty much what you'd find in the DM's monster manual or the players at the end. But it's in an app. So if you're looking literally for um, a scorpion, you would click on and it would tell you everything you need to know about a scorpion for that battle. It tells you the baby scorpion, but also tells you the giant scorpion when you look further down. Triceratops, mule, hyena. All the sort of standard normal animals that you're possibly going to be using in the game. It's really, really quick. It's rapid. And it saves you having to pour through loads and loads of sort of pages of books. Desperately trying to find it while the players stare at you. All these things that make the game smoother make you a better dungeon master and people appreciate quickness and not time wasting there's nothing worse than sitting there and just desperately trying to find a creature in another episode i will show my advice on how to make life simpler on creature location for the game rather than pouring through books i mean it's a fairly simple technique and used by a lot of people but you never know you may not use it and it might really really help you what other apps let's have a look the D&D fifth spell book originally it was a really really good app um, and then they updated it and it wasn't quite as good as it was before and you do have to pay a slight little subscription for it which isn't it's minor it's, it's not no real major cost but what it does do, it allows you, if you press all spells, um, to go through all the player's handbook spells, um, all the books published up to date in regards to, uh, let's have a look, the Sword Coast, and it has the Elemental spells. And it's quick and easy. So when someone sits there saying, oh, what does, for instance, Acid Splash do? You click it, it will tell you the casting time, the components, the range, duration, and everything you'd normally find in the player's handbook, but on an instant app. And it makes it really, really, really fast and quick. And anything that's quick and fast, and that says you're pouring through a book, and you can probably find in probably under 10 seconds, it's an absolute must at the table. I use it all the time. Not I used to use it for the very rare occasion I was a player. But like I said, they changed the app and it wasn't quite as good to navigate. But from a DM's point of view, it's a super, super fast way of finding an instant spell that is inside the system. From those books I've said um, for players... And it doesn't take any time at all. It's worth its weight in gold. It's certainly worth having. What else have we got? You've got a we have another one which is um let's have a look. It's called Crit Dice, although its name does belay what it actually is. It's actually a dice roller. It's a very good dice roller as well. You can do pretty much As you imagine on most dice rollers. But it does let you do favourites. I do believe there's a subscription. If you want to do it for endless amount. But you could add your character of choice. And you can get all their dice rolls. For all their weapons. And all their spells done. And so you could sit there without any dice at all. And have your character's name on it. And just roll your dice. Um, it's not bad. It's very good really. Um, saying that, to be fair.